Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Secular Jihadists for a Muslim Enlightenment. My name is Ali Rizvi, and with me is Armin Navabi. And I'm going to ask him how he is, and he's just going to say... Fine. Yeah, there you go. That's that's how it goes. It's a dumb Armin, question. So, <laughs> I know. He doesn't like that question, but he has to do it every single time. As we say the same thing every time. So, so anyway, I'm going to get right to it. Women who leave Islam. This is a topic that we're talking about today. And uh, with us, we have a, a rising ex-Muslim YouTube star who just started very recently. She's joining us from the UK. Uh, this is uh, it's Marwa. It's Mimsy Vids. For those of you who uh, watched her on YouTube, hi, Mimsy. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. It is. It is. It's totally our honor. I mean, you, you started, I think, uh, I don't know, in June or something. We started making Ju your YouTube videos. July. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In July. And your first video is called Why I Left Islam. And it's already got over 200,000 views uh, yeah. as, as of today. And um, so you've, you've got an amazing story. Uh, and, and we're going to get into that. Uh, but uh, I thought uh, we'd start by talking a little bit about your your background. So you came from a, you were raised in a very, very religious household. You used to wear the hijab. I mean, you had some pictures in your video of, of a bunch of kids in a school. You went to an Islamic school yeah. uh, where all the little kids, the little girls were wearing hijab and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Islam was just a sort of fact of life. It wasn't a religion, but it was just a reality. That's what the world was for you. That's what it seemed like. So can you, can you kind of talk about um, how you started there and uh, how you ended up where you are? Yeah, so um, so yes, I went to a Muslim school my whole life. My parents were devout Muslims. Um, my whole community was Muslim. I mean, I you know I mentioned that video. I didn't actually growing up. I didn't meet non-Muslims. I mean, that's kind of how extreme it was. Um, and the school we went to, a lot of people know actually, because it was the first Muslim school in the UK. Um, it was by Cat Stevens. If you guys know Yusuf Islam, mm. Yusuf Islam. Yeah, I still yeah. love his music. So I do I. I still yeah, listen yeah. to it all the time, yeah. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh -huh. So uh, he actually still is doing music these days. But anyway, um, but yeah, so he he opened he opened up that school and it's basically just normal kind of English, math, science, and then alongside that you do Islamic studies, Quran, and classical Quranic Arabic as well. Um so yeah, so I mean my whole life was in this bubble. I describe it as a bubble because you just you don't know anything else and it's like this is reality it's you're never kind of told to question or it's just this is it um and so uh yeah i mean i obviously started questioning things uh when i got to university i think that's kind of when it started when i when i met other people <laughs> i was like oh okay this is interesting um but to be honest with you, I was very much in the Dawa scene, um, <laughs> which a lot of people don't know. Uh, I was at one point like full abaya, which is, you know, the black kind of clothing, hijab. There was a time where I was very, very extreme, basically. Um, uh, can, you, can you explain what Dawa is just really sorry. quickly for those who are not familiar? No, I do that yeah. a lot where I just say things and I don't really... Oh, no, 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 no. That, that, that's um, what we're here for, so go for it. Perfect. Um, yeah, so the Dawah scene, it's basically just spreading Islam. I don't know what actually the direct um, translation is, but... It, Proselytizing, in a way. Yes, like, exactly, what, what, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, ultimately, if you want to go to heaven, you, you should be Muslim. So it's kind of helping other people by telling them about Islam, bringing them to Islam. I mean, I used to have um, little leaflets that I made <laughs> of, um, uh, you know, this is why you should be Muslim. And it's really funny because I made a video on those things that I had in the leaflet 
um, on kind of four reasons why you're Muslim. And I, as a Muslim, was like, these are four reasons why you should be a Muslim. <laughs> I was like, because there's scientific miracles um, and, you know, all these different things I kind of had in there. You know, the Quran is a miracle. The Prophet Muhammad was epic. You know, whatever he did, he was cool. Uh, and, you know, I had all these kind of things that I wrote out and, um, and I would hand them to people. And I got really involved with, uh, I went to uni with my husband, Vidu Vids, in case anyone doesn't know. Um, and both of us actually would uh, set up. We call up him Mr. Mimsy here. Mr. Mimsy. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so yeah, myself and Mr. Mimsy, um, we would set up conferences, um, you know, bring big chefs, you know, so we we're very involved basically um, in university. And I think that's where the kind of debate started. Uh, that's where it really started because we were really kind of connecting with people that weren't Muslim and from other communities. And then we were kind of, and then our views changed um, with being Muslim. Um, we, we were together for a long time, by the way, as well. So we've been together since we were at school. Um, but, but during university years, um, our views changed where I then started to kind of think, oh yeah, that, that does sound, sound a bit harsh. Like, but everyone's going to, burn if they're not Muslim and uh, you know I kind of started to think it's a bit harsh so then I looked into Sufism <laughs> and I was like well, this is great this is like a happy hippie kind of version we can kind of take or leave whatever we want and then my vibe changed I kind of dressed more hippie I put my scarf back you know whatever and I was very it's a very, very common sort of transitional phase yeah. for a lot of ex-Muslims I've seen they usually go through a Sufi phase before they they let Absolutely. it all go yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then that, that was it, basically. So it was just right before I kind of started to eventually uh, let it all go. And then it was like, I can't stand by this anymore. You know, I can't represent. And that's how I felt. I felt like as a Muslim, I was representing, especially because I was very involved with the community, that I was representing Islam. So it's like, I don't really want to represent this anymore. And I, I have no other kind of version or twist I can make on this that will make this okay. Uh, and there were many things, obviously, I, I kind of go through them, a few of them in my video, but there are many things, you know, slavery and the treatment of women. Um, I mean, you heard it all before, all those kind of aspects that I was like, I don't know how to make this all right. Um, and and then I kind of left secretly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then eventually, actually, I told the, my entire community and my family by the video. So everyone found out five months ago or oh. however, however long it was ago. Yeah. Really? Like, so... Yeah, yeah, so, on. so one of the things that you you mentioned in your video is, uh, you know, your your father, who uh, both of us are huge fans of, Hassan Radwan. Yeah. Um, he, uh, you mentioned that he was actually very religious as well, and he was he was a very religious Muslim, and then uh, he actually left Islam, and he announced to the family that he had he had left Islam, and he announced yeah. it to you too, and that kind of. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it traumatized you. I don't know what word to use, but uh, you were concerned about him. Uh, yeah. When, it, how did he make that announcement? So, actually, really hilarious. I don't know if I should say this, but um, uh -huh. he, um, he took us to a harvester, which in England is basically a pub. Um, me and my elder brother. Um, but we would go because my dad's half English, so we would kind of go to kind of places like that towards the end anyway, uh, when he kind of relaxed. We all just thought he relaxed a bit and he was like, oh, we can go to a pub, great. And it's like, yeah, but just have Cokes and stuff. Like, all right, cool. Um, so he took us um, there and kind of sat us down. So there's five kids, by the way. So me and my eldest brother, the two eldest. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm the five. And um, so he basically just said, look, I changed my views, um, you know, about, about Islam and I'm fine with you being Muslim and you can do what you want. It's your journeys, but I just, I just don't believe it anymore. Um, and it's weird because in that moment I was kind of just like, I don't know. I can't explain it. I must've been like 17 or 18. Um, so I was actually moving out. Oh, I was moving out, planning to move out to go to uni anyway. So, um, but I, yeah, it was, I can't, I can't explain what kind of went through my mind. I kind of just went, okay, he's having a mental breakdown. <laughs> um, because this is strange. But, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think what was going through my head, but I can't even remember to be honest, but I, it was along those lines. And 
I was raised by a village, so we've got a huge family, and like my dad's one of nine, and then they've got like ten thousand kids each. So there's just so many of us. So everyone kind of swooped in and was like, "Your dad's crazy. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Uh, he, okay, he's just having a breakdown." And he actually was suffering from depression anyway, and he started taking antidepressants at that time. So it kind of made sense. He was just having a breakdown. That's what this was. Um, and that's kind of how I understood it, really, uh, which is quite sad. But um, yeah, so I kind of just um, carried on. Well, he, he didn't really bring it up as well. It wasn't like he discussed it every day. He literally, that was the only conversation we had, only until I started having doubts. Then I went to him and was like, oh, you know that stuff that you used to say? And then we used to talk about it. But he made, so he actually started making videos on YouTube as well. And I remember calling him and being like, you need to take these down because this is embarrassing. I'm never going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> but how um, long ago was this? So how long ago was it that um, uh, uh, your dad left? 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. 10 years ago, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for the people that don't know, your dad started making YouTube videos and this stuff way before any of us, like, this is like before any of any of this was trending, before ex-Muslim mm -hmm. movement was even a thing. Like, this is, uh, yeah, he's like one of the founding uh, people yeah. of this movement. But, and but I, I actually got to know him through an article that he'd written in The Guardian, I think. Um, okay. which, but that was much later. I mean, it wasn't 10 years ago. Yeah, that was, was much later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. wait, so you say you're not going to get married because of him, but, but how did you respond? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> you need to take the This is embarrassing. All the family. And I, I wasn't living with him. So basically... The time I lived with my dad, he's always been Muslim, very religious. You know, he used to say to me, always be in wudu, you know, always be in, um, like, what, what is that? I don't even know how to translate it. You, you basically, this the, the kind of wash you do before you pray. Um, so he used to always say, like, you know, we used to pray, obviously, five times a day, but we used to do the extra prayers together as a family. Oh, wow. And he used to, he you guys were serious. Me, Oh yeah, I extra mean, pairs like the close. ones that you don't. Okay, like people have to understand you do five times, but there are some ones that you could do that are optional, and yeah, yeah. nobody does. Those. <laughs> so yeah, you, right. you guys were really serious, okay? Yeah, yeah. no, we were serious. Like, um, yeah, and uh, so it, it was. I remember even like my dad was really quite strict with, you know, the sheikh told him once uh, we had like a the sheikh at the school, and he was like our family kind of sheikh as well, basically. Uh, He's actually quite famous, but um, I don't know if anyone knows him. Sheikh Ahmed Babakar. He's quite well known. I'm sure some people know him, especially in the Sufi crew. Um, but anyways, he he was our kind of family chef and he would come over. And like I remember once he passed my room and I had like Britney Spears posters everywhere. And he was like, you need to tell your daughter to like not have posters because they'll bring gins and stuff. <laughs> um, and my dad was like, take everything well, down. He, like, he was oh. right, wasn't he? I mean, look yeah. at you now. I know, right? But, but anyway, for people that don't know gins, you mean uh, it's kind of like an Islamic version <laughs> of a demon? So, oh, demons. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. Sorry, I've completely gone off topic. What was I saying? Um, uh, you were telling your father to take the videos down because so, they were embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, that was it. So yeah, so I told him, you know, take take them down. It's really embarrassing. You're just talking a load of crap anyway. And I and I would be. Well, this is so funny now. I would be the people in the comments being like, "Well, you're not Muslim because." <laughs> I was one of those people. I was like trying to convert people, like just read like this ayah. Like, don't you know there's no compulsion in Islam? Like, don't you know that? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's so, why he left it. I know, no right? Compulsion. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. That, that's my favorite. That's my yeah. favorite. But, but no that's, that's not true, by the way. But but did you comment in your your own dad's videos as well? Did you go? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I mean, we, we kind of disconnected quite a lot then. And I, by the way, I was, I was raised by my dad. So my parents have been divorced since I was three. So my dad was a single dad. Um, so I was pretty much raised by him, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, he's always kind of been, he's always been kind of strict with Islam and, but, but then cool with us because obviously he was kind of playing two parents. Um, so we had a really good relationship. So it was really sad because it kind of changed the dynamic of our relationship for sure. Um, but but I was kind of like, well, to me, it just made sense. I was like, you know, you're going to have to just come around. Like, you're just going to have to figure it out. I was quite hardcore. <laughs> so, so how did you eventually like uh, start transitioning to the ex-Muslim 
I mean, clearly it took it took a while since then. People, a lot of people tell me like, "Oh, you only left because your dad left." I'm like, seriously, you have no idea. Like that had nothing to do with it. Um, it what was the question? When? How and when? Yeah. How? Both, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it was kind of what what I mentioned, just kind of the, the debating with non-Muslims at university. That's that's what started it, and then it was a very gradual, really gradual process of like looking into stuff to represent Islam and defend Islam, looking into stuff to be like, no guys, Islam's great. Or look at this. Uh, it, it was kind of from that angle, hmm. um, which again, I always get criticism from Muslims who say, you know, you just want to look for the bad and you just kind of, you know, you, you, you're looking for an excuse, a, a way out basically. But it, it was the complete opposite. I was looking for a way in. <laughs> hmm. um, and, uh, and then it kind of started to kind of unravel uh, bit yeah. by bit, yeah. yeah Anything I, in specific you remember that that you had a huge problem with? Um, for me, it was it was definitely the kind of the the idea of hijab. I think was the first oh. thing, the first thing I looked into, um, because. Well, I don't know. I, I suppose being a woman, obviously wearing it, it's, uh, you know, I, I always talk about it on my channel being such a huge thing and such an almost burden for women to wear. Because it's like, you can't even pretend you're not Muslim. <laughs> like, it's like yeah. A guy can go out and be a Muslim, but you may not know. But a woman is just like, hi. So, um, you know, I was kind of like, okay, well, let me let me prove to everyone, you know, or, or even just being a representative and wearing the hijab, let me have the knowledge so that I can spread it and be like, well, this is why I wear hijab. Um, so I really looked into that and I just kind of the idea of, you know, kind of sexualizing women, you know, this, this is supposed to be like, you're protecting your kind of, I don't know, honor and beauty and hiding it from men. And, and, and that, that kind of just puzzled me after a while. I was kind of like, well, but to be honest with you, even just my experiences, you know, kind of being in a non-Muslim country where women, you know, dress however they want to dress, obviously you get the occasional kind of chat up or whatever, but it's not the same as, you know, my family are kind of Egyptian and Moroccan. And if I were to go to those countries and even wear hijab, you get harassed to like a whole nother level. So yeah. that really made me think the hijab's not really working because if it's supposed to kind of create this kind of societal way of like, oh, you know, we're supposed to protect the women and women are honored because they wear hijab. I'm like, well, why didn't that work? Because you guys are doing it and it's clearly not worked. Um, and surely God would know how to kind of have a perfect society. And if he's given this way of doing it, why doesn't it work? So when you, um, yeah. when you were wearing it and you were defending it, what would you say? Um, it's funny thinking back now. Um, so I, I would say things like, you know, it, it's for, it's for, um, you know, a man will look at me now with this hijab on. I say this all the time. This, this is my, like, I'm such a saleswoman because I actually work in sales. So I used to do this as like a dial woman. Like, you know, a man, a man would look at me and he would look at me not for my beauty, but for my intelligence. You know, he'd be listening to the words and saying and not thinking of me as an object. I'm not going to be, I mean, this is the typical stuff that you hear, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm not objectified by them and, and, and by having that. And, it, you know, essentially it's, it's kind of men are, this is the other thing that bothers me, you know, men are like kind of just, they're like animals, you know, <laughs> you just, you've got to, you've got to kind of, um, it's your responsibility, obviously, to maintain to these men. Them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, uh, and uh, when people would say that to me, because I would get these arguments back, I would just be like, yeah, but God made them that way. Um, and God knows his creation. So he kind of knows the antidote, basically. So would you get any arguments to uh, from any Muslims that say, actually, there's nowhere in the Quran that there that mandates the hijab or something like that? Anything like that that you had to respond to? Yeah, a few times, a few times. I, I was in quite a, a strict community, so not that often. Mm. But yeah, I had definitely heard it where it was saying, well, the veil. Yeah, no, no, actually, yeah, I, I did have a few people say that to me. But, um, you know, in the Quran, because, uh, you know, these are the people that kind of don't take had hadith too seriously, aren't they? And I, I wasn't, the people I, the people I was around were very hadith orientated, so it's slightly different. But you know, the Quran says that it's just about your beauty and hiding your adornments. So that could be 
what uh, you know whatever beauty it is in in the context of the western world or right. whatever context you're in it's just a modesty um, thing just a it's just a, a modesty general thing. concept yeah exactly exactly yeah i definitely heard that but not that much so yeah I, yeah i want i wanted to go back the one thing that you said that is so important is that you said that when you um went in and you were researching when people were saying all these things about muslims and you would you were trying to find a way you were looking at the quran and scripture and everything to find a way in not find mm. a way out and yeah. um this is i mean it, 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 i have pretty much an entire chapter of my book about how i went through this process so i would go into the quran i went through a bit of a sufi thing too and okay. then i also started it became a hobby of mine to try and reinterpret things that were in the quran and i remember i had a you know i had a girlfriend when i was in, in medical school and uh, she was, you know, we were both Muslim, obviously. And then we were talking about the, the whole premarital sex thing and mm -hmm. uh, the four witnesses. And I remember looking at it and convincing her or convincing her. Okay, this is the TMI. Mm -hmm. But I was telling her, I was like, listen, it's, it's not about the sin. It's not about the premarital sex is not the sin. The sin is if you're doing it in front of four male adults, ah. if the propagation is a sin. Because right. how often would you do something like that? You'd have four male adults who can, Muslims who can witness the act of penetration. So yeah, male that's a sin. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, 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 whatever the actual act itself is not, yeah. that's between you and God. And it's not, yeah, yeah. And, and so I would find ways like that to, uh, try and find a way and and i i got very good at it for a little while like you know you're saying you're from the sales um, yeah. thing so so there's there's a way you can spin everything and you can really exactly. take it to an extreme but at one point just broke and i was like okay this is you know this is all bullshit so yeah. I was like i can't do this yeah. anymore hey, but that, that's then, such yeah. an important yeah. point i i think yeah. because a lot of people think that ex-muslims are ex-muslims because and they've been looking for excuses. They're trying mm -hmm. to cherry pick all the bad stuff and, and yeah. publicize it. But that's not true. Uh, yeah. uh, almost all ex-Muslims I know really struggled with this because when they're leaving the faith, they're not just leaving, changing their mind about something. They're risking leaving their entire family, being disowned, being persecuted, ostracized from their communities and society mm -hmm. and everything. So they really, really try very hard to yeah. find ways to keep at least one foot in. Um, yeah. Usually, when they leave, it's it's almost an involuntary process for many of them. So, so go, yeah. go, going back to your story, when when you were doing when you were um, mm -hmm. when you when you were experimenting with Sufism, how come that wasn't good enough? How come at some point you were like, you know, fuck this shit, goodbye Islam? Like, is it why wasn't that hippie, um, you know, mild, uh, not non not so aggressive? version of yeah. islam not good enough for you yeah because it fulfilled some of the questions and so it was kind of you know for example petty things as well and I, I remember i started my why i left islam video with those little things because those, those were kind of just pointless like music for example mm -hmm. uh, you know we were always told that music some people said in my community music is totally haram some people said it's not haram but it's not great you know, it's not, it's not, it's not helpful. It's not, it's not good. It's whatever. Yeah, so music, here. yeah. So music was never kind of like, okay to do. Um, so yeah, so that, that wasn't fun. Um, so Sufism covered that. So I was like, perfect. Um, and then like things like plucking your eyebrows, um, all these kind of things that I just thought were pathetic to be honest. And I was like, how, how is this so bad? You know? Um, and, but then it came down to kind of the bigger things where I was like, okay, now how about this stuff? <laughs> like yeah. homosexuality and, um, you know, uh, um, you know the, the kind of the witnesses and how a woman's uh, a woman's verdict is kind of less than a man's and um, you know the, the mis misogyny in Islam they they don't really take too much away from that you know right. they, they don't put they don't put importance on it within the the Sufism world it, that I was in anyway they don't kind of highlight it or talk about it it's all kind of under the rug. But it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> the homophobia yeah. is still there. The misogyny is still there. Exactly. All of it. Slavery. Is just, slavery exactly. is, yep. And uh, oh, yeah, that's a, true, the yeah. anti-Muslim bigotry is there. Sufism ha comes with all of that. And the thing is, yeah. it's kind of a, for non-Muslims, it's kind of a, like a gateway drug to full-on Islam as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it is. Yeah, that's it, a, it, is it is still a, it is still a problem, right? So it works both ways, actually. Perfect. I, actually, I was just no, gonna I, say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, a, funny. That's, <laughs> so so. Did you consider? So you know, you're going through this process. You go through this sort of Sufi time where you're finding more. Uh, I, I guess uh, uh, stuff that's I guess a little bit more palatable than the conservative version you had, even yeah. though it hasn't gone all the way. Did you consider? Uh, other religions to go to, or um, yeah. like Christianity, or any that did you look into them even, or consider them, and why uh, not? If not. No, I mean, um, it's a good question. Actually, I never thought about that. No, I didn't. It didn't occur to me. I knew a little bit about Christianity just because I studied a bit of it at university, but I am, um, yeah, no, Chris Christianity never appealed to me. Judaism kind of felt alien to me obviously being a Muslim as well. Um, so no, I kind of, coming out of Islam, it was like Abrahamic religions. For me, it was, you know, it was the whole lot of the Abrahamic religions anyway. I kind of plopped yeah. them together, <laughs> kind of like, oh, okay, I don't believe in Islam, so none of them can be true. Because the reasons I don't believe in Islam are the same in Judaism and Christianity. So that, that was never an option. Um, and I liked the idea, we've actually got, um, a very close Hindu friend of ours who's been like trying to convert us pretty much since we've left. So I, <laughs> I, I've been like, we flirting. all do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've been kind of flirting with Hinduism a little bit just cause I, just cause I think it's interesting, but no, I, I, I'm not, a, I'm not, uh, I just don't like the concept of religion. And I think that was part when I left, that was also a concept that I didn't like. Um, but yeah, for me personally, obviously if you want to be religious, that's fine. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, well, it's not so, fine, so but you have the right to it. Yeah, you have the right to it, exactly. But it's and, not uh, fine. I mean, I suppose, <laughs> I, suppose, <laughs> I suppose it depends on what the religion is. and what, Well, it depends what, what, you're, what you believe within the religion. That's, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's more to it, I suppose. Um, yeah, not really. I don't know. Did, did, did you guys kind of look into religions? Or is that something that a lot of people have done? Yeah. I've, I've never I, had that question before. I, I did. Yeah. I, d I did that because I had the same issue. One of the things you mentioned is that you had a problem with people burning just because they're not Muslim. So yeah. I was trying to come up with a way to maybe find a way that to see if other religions were kind of like Islam, but like uh -huh. Islam light, maybe they won't burn because they're technically kind of Muslim, right? So I was yeah. trying to see, okay. see because that was so unjust for me that I was trying to see if there's a way that I could justify. I couldn't see why a merciful God would just mm. burn people just for lack of for not believing. And like maybe they're yeah. just kind of like Muslim. I don't know. Like so, I started studying the other, um, I, but but started studying from the very beginning, like the history of religion, like caveman religion. So right. there was a I in in my case when when I was in uh, university, uh, there was a guy at the cafeteria. It was a, this was in Pakistan, um, and uh, there was a guy in the cafeteria who had converted to Christianity. Um, and his he changed his name to Elvis Presley for some reason. So I, 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 it happened nice. I guess. as I went and his name tag said Elvis Presley. I'm like, oh, Elvis. So so then I, I ended up at some point having like a bit of a conversation with him. And he told me about Christianity, how Jesus loves you and forgiveness. And so later on when I went through this, you know, I, I knew a lot about Christianity before because when I was studying Islam, I was studying the other stuff too. And a lot of Christian friends would come and they'd tell me, that you know, unlike Psalm, this is there's no jihad. This is all about peace and love and valuing life and forgiveness, and it's mm -hmm. like this sort of Buddha Gandhi type thing. Um, but then when you look at it, you realize that a big part of uh, Christianity is submission. You know, Islam means submission, and mm -hmm. this is submission, accepting Jesus as your savior. And if you don't, then you burn in hell forever. So it, it's like yeah. the no compulsion verse that, that you know, mm -hmm. I, there's no compulsion in Islam, but if you don't believe it, then you're going to be tortured. And the violence yeah. isn't here, but the threat of eternal violence and torture is used yeah. to manipulate uh, the behavior of people on earth, which is fascistic. You know, so yeah. I, I just... Well, the compulsion I, is even in this world as well. I, but we... I, um, but uh, that's a whole other episode. The whole no compulsion thing is absolute not. Horse, yeah, yeah, that's horse I mean, it's, it is. It is. So it is. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah. So I, I just rejected it uh, yeah. outright. And my, my big problem was uh, about the stuff was really the idea of a god because I, I was 
I was reading a lot of science. I was a student of science. I was doing medicine. Uh, you know, I was very, I'd, I'd grown up on Carl Sagan's Cosmos series. So, you know, this idea that there was a God who said, let there be light and, mm. uh, you know, who wrote these books, but it's the same one who's, you know, invented time dilation and, and, you know, binary pulsars and all these galaxies. It just didn't fit. So I have to just reject it outright. So yeah. I, 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 Ali mentioned a couple of times in our episode about how, um, you know, because Ali is an ex-Muslim and his wife is an ex-Muslim and he has experienced the different uh, comments that him, he and his wife, Alishba, gets uh, online and the amount of hostility that his wife gets, it seems to be a, a lot more than what he gets. And mm-hmm. given that oh you yeah. given that... Um, um, it seems to me, it seems to me that a lot of Muslims are way more sensitive about losing uh, women um, out of Islam than they are losing men out of Islam. I mean, they are they are still sensitive about losing men. Uh, they're still very offended about anybody leaving Islam. But it seems to be even much even much worse when women are leaving. And, uh, and given yeah. that you are both you and Malid are ex-Muslims, and you should. I wonder if you experience any difference between the comments that you get and what he gets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's, when you said that, I was like, oh, it, it's mental. The difference we get, it's just it's just crazy. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I get scared. I mean, L- London's not safe when it comes to this kind of stuff anyway. Mm. Um, yeah. But just even in real life. I have to really care for. I get so many looks, so many people that are because uh, we, especially where we are, we're kind of like smack in the middle of a Muslim community. So we probably need to move. But um, no, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> no, but, don't um, no move. <laughs> don't don't okay. Yeah. No, no, we we want to stay put. Okay. Um, yeah. No, we're we're fighting the fight. No, it's um no no, but yeah, the, I I get you know sometimes I kind of be careful not to walk too close to people because I'm like, do they have like acid in their hand? Like, am I? Do you know what I mean? Like, is that serious? Yeah, that has happened there in the UK. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, has yeah. people loads of times. Yeah. Yeah. That people yeah. have thrown acid in the faces of women. Um, yeah. yeah. It's it's insanity. Hundred okay. percent. Okay. It's interesting that the way you said that, though. How did you say? It? You said um, that men don't want to lose because it almost. That's not the way I thought of it at all. You almost said it like it was like an emotional thing that men feel sad, like all oh, these women are leaving us. Whereas I kind of see it as like those bitches. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not yeah. like it. It. I think the way you framed it almost sounded nice. Almost, it was like it was like they were kind of like losing the are uh, like women you know like, i never thought of it like that which is which is interesting well the way, um, but I, it's kind of like losing your prop prop like something you own like the reason why i think right. is losing women because when men leave it's just them leaving but when women leave it seems like this is ours okay. this is yeah. ours and they're uh-huh. taking something that we mm-hmm. own away from us that's why the way i see it Right. Okay. So yeah, it, 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 and it's this kind of control aspect. So yeah, that comes into it as well. It's, mm-hmm. it, you know, women are supposed to be kind of, you know, doing what we say, men are in charge, um, you know, and that, that's how Islam is, you know, the, the man's the head of the household, the men are the sheikhs, the men are the imams, the men are, you know, kind of have authority over women as dawah men, the, the famous dawah men's words are. So um yeah, so I mean, that's what it is. So that's that's where the aggression comes from. But I mean, they're so disgusting and vile about it that I, I kind of was expecting like a little bit of hate, I guess. I don't know what I was expecting, but <laughs> I just kind of jumped into it. Um, and the hate I get is it's all a lot of it's like sexual, like mm. it's just so vile. I can't like the amount of things that get flagged on my comments. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the stuff some people say to me, oh God, take that one down. Like, that one's really bad. And I'm like, no, let, do you know what? Mm-hmm. Let, let people see the reality of it because this is the reality of it. I'm not going to hide it. Um, you know, people tell me disable your comments and I'm like, no, mm-hmm. you know, I, I also want to see the progression, which is obviously I'm you know trying to be hopeful about it, that hopefully it will change. Um, I've had, and I think I've heard you guys say this before, I've had some people, and I've only been doing it for a few months, but even then I've had some people kind of, you know, you recognize certain people that always come back, don't you? And some people were kind of really harsh at the beginning, and then now they've kind of changed their tune. So so I am hopeful that, 
you know, a, more women speaking out, you know, it, it will change. I think it, it, it's also a shock factor. I mean, even with our, I was, we were just talking about this actually, Willie and I, because even with our families, uh, when we kind of came out, especially the way that I did, um, it caused like havoc. And um, for a lot, for um, maybe like 40% of them, it was just the shock factor of it. It was like, whoa, a woman speaking out. That just doesn't happen. Mm. Um, yeah, so it, it, it was that mainly. And then after a while, it was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. we'll do, just do you have any examples of the comments like uh, that is... That you could share, are, 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 I'm are, gonna read them. <laughs> no, like yeah. just like some certain themes and so, the threats, because most yeah. of the threats that I've noticed, even coming to us, uh, yeah. is towards female members, our, uh, our, our, our wives, our wives, our mothers, oh, daughters. Yeah. So, like so, even when we're doing the activism and my wow. wife is not doing the activism, the threat is directed at her. So, okay. and it's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah, sorry, Armin, com complete what you were saying. And it's a lot of them is, uh, the, the threats to me mostly is, uh, death threats, but the, yeah. the threat, the threats towards her or m m m my mom that's, who's already dead or my uh, daughter that I don't have or a sister that I don't, they, they threaten them anyways, even though they don't exist, uh, mm -hmm. is mostly rape threats. Yes. Yeah. Is that this? Yeah. 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 It, 100%. Yeah, yeah I was going to actually give examples of, I'll give two examples of, with Alishba, um, who was actually on the, the the Taliban list for a little while as well for supporting like a secular candidate in Pakistan. So uh, we actually ended up having to go to the police to report some of these. Uh, the, the threats, there were Muslim guys, like religious Muslim guys who say, oh, you've left Islam. Maybe this will help you come back. And then they'd send a dick pic. And they would literally say, okay, I'll just rape you wow. back into some. So after a while, what she did was she started at one instance, I think she posted it. She took a screenshot with a little bit of, uh, obviously, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, she cut it off at the, she circumcised the, the picture right, right, right. and, and she uh, put it up. And then the guy's sister came in. He's like, no, you know, please take this down. And it became a huge thing. Oh yeah. But, um, yeah, remember, remember that? And then, so there, there was a, because they don't expect to be, uh, okay, well, Exposed. No, pun, eh, no pun intended, I was going to say, <laughs> but the, um, that's one thing, but those are the kinds of things, like well, another comment was that I'm going to put a gun in your vagina and shoot bullets. I mean, I'm, oh. I'm sanitizing. That's actually yeah, yeah, a clean yeah. version. You should, oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe you should find, you should it's do the same incredible. thing. You should find their moms and uh, send the comments to their moms. Hey, like your son sent me this. <laughs> That's what that's what Lishba does, or their employers. Oh, Often right. you can find where they work, and uh, you can. I mean, you can how? Them I don't even know. Like you guys, like detectives. Like how? They're just like they've got some uh, like random. Been, yeah. Some people, I some people even say like they comment like I just made this account just to make this comment. I'm like, wow. That's dedication. <laughs> An another reason for this that I think uh, that we've talked about because uh, you know it's the same thing with if, if I leave. It was very, when I was growing up, it was very common for the men to sit in a living room and to openly debate ideas and stuff. Yeah. But if a woman came and she even expressed a little bit of doubt about Islam, then yeah. the, the Islam was tied in with the morality. Like, you know, a woman who is a Muslim is a moral woman. A woman who's not a Muslim, that means she just wants to have sex and get drunk so you can do anything with her. She doesn't want to cover her hair. Well, I wonder why. Uh, it's yeah. because, she, you know, so there's a... There, there's this idea that women who women who leave Islam, like ex Muslim mm -hmm. women, are um, immoral. They're loose charactered. You can do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, that that whole idea. So that's, that's a very exactly it. And I get so many kind of like, well, why don't you open up a brothel? Why don't you? Oh, so you can have sex with exactly. anyone now. Yeah. Have sex with me. It's like, and it's just like it, it's all. It's literally all about sex. It literally it's all is. about sex. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it's, it's just well, it's, yeah. That, it's, it's also jealousy, I think. Um, again, this is, you know, is other misogynistic cultures all have this issue as well. I mean, Islam is very misogynistic, but you could hear that when people say like, oh, they're stealing our woman. They don't, they, they don't say that about men. They don't say they're stealing our men. But, but when they, when you say that they're stealing our woman, that shows a level of, 
property. sense of ownership that they have over over people. But, but also, it's it's the role of women. Well, what is the role of women for for, for these people? You 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 are the wives and you are the mothers. So right. you know, if you're if you're kind of not in their in their box of what they imagine you to be what kind of a wife or what kind of a mother are you going to be so it's like you're you know you're mm. breaking the rules completely and um and if you're not either of thing either of those things you're a slut so it's like you know you you have to be how that, that's how they see the world it's and it is this way that you view islam anyway it's kind of tick the box and then you go into heaven or if you do the wrong thing you're into hell so it's, it's very kind of boxy mentality they've got yeah, which we in heaven where you go have sex with seventy two virgins, and they call they tell <laughs> us they tell us we're leaving Islam because we want to have sex. Where their whole religion is about <laughs> rewarding people with sex. That uh, is very uh, true. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I what do you think of? Um, I wanted to move. I know that you had a lot of uh, posts about, um, you know, the recent case with uh, Rahaf Al Kanun, uh, who came out there, I, and we talked about this in the in the previous episode how this was really. A sort of landmark event because it showed uh, how big and cohesive and influential the ex-Muslim community has become. This is a young woman, 18 years old, uh, who's Saudi, who escaped her family, her Saudi family. Uh, she left Islam, mm -hmm. right, and um, she became an apostate. And uh, it's a very prominent part of her story. And uh, she was successfully escaped, uh, and uh, the, she was detained in Thailand uh, mm -hmm. for a little while by authorities. And they were pretty much set on sending her back to Saudi Arabia, where she would almost certainly be killed. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this huge social media campaign started. Lots and lots of ex-Muslims and and Muslim reformers and everyone to their you know to their credit, everybody got involved, including you and non non Muslims as well. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah, and everybody and. It gained the attention of uh, you know a lot of New York Times journalists, Wall Street Journal ju journalists, and, and it showed up in the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. And eventually, like as of yesterday, there was there were videos of her at the airport here in my city in Toronto with Krista mm -hmm. Friedland, Foreign Minister Justin Trudeau, accepting her here as a and you know because we always talk about liberal regressives, and Justin Trudeau is always thought of as a liberal regressive, and now mm -hmm. here he is uh, accepting uh, you know giving almost immediate refugee status to a, an ex-Muslim woman who escaped Saudi Arabia, and mm -hmm. we already have broken diplomatic ties to Saudi Arabia too. So this is um, just something that I, we've been hoping for for a very long yeah. time. We've never seen happen, and a lot of people are cynical about it. And it seems like we've moved into the next phase of this, where the ex-Muslim, um, I guess, experience and the plight of ex-Muslims has become mainstream in a way, and it's even because it, there's so much talk about it and chatter about it, that even a lot of mainstream liberals and liberal governments are paying attention to it. Um, mm -hmm. Even though, yeah, a lot of the coverage was about her escaping Saudi Arabia and not necessarily leaving Islam, but but more articles than not actually did mention that she had renounced Islam yep. too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah so, yeah, so, um, yeah, and I, I, know, I know you did a lot to, uh, to have, I saw a lot of your posts and, and you were definitely part of doing it and you're a, a very influential voice among ex-Muslims, especially ex-Muslim women. But um, how do you see the, the future of this now? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. I mean, to be honest with you, I kind of expected an uphill battle and kind of, you know, this would take a while. And, you know, you know, and I was happy that there is a community, that, you know, like all of us speaking out, people are writing kind of books like both of you have. And the, the message is kind of getting out there. But to be honest with you, I'm honestly surprised I, I didn't think something like this would happen and I was so I mean I, I couldn't sleep I mean I remember when it was all happening and it was unfolding it was like I was like this is crazy like you know I I was I, I was almost I don't want to even say that I was just I was kind of thinking the worst basically which was what what was making me so scared because I was like no one's really going to intervene this quickly are they really going to listen to this are they really going to care like is this is something really going to happen you know I was um because in the past actually there was a yeah I mean the case of Dina it was a Dina exactly. Ali I think yeah that she nobody's heard from her before she was mm -hmm. sent back from the Philippines and um exactly. 
So that was actually a very discouraging story. So this yeah. was this turned out to be the opposite of that. Yeah, she's yeah. missing now. We don't know what happened to her. We don't know what happened to her. I mean, Saudi is saying that, you know, she's um, obviously with her family or whatever. Um, but it's interesting because I've got family who um, live in Saudi. And I actually messaged them just like, oh, because um, they like all hate me. But I was just kind of dropped in a message like, hi, um, what's going on? Do you know anything about, um, about Rahaf? I just kind of really wanted to know what, uh, like, like right. people in Saudi were thinking about it. And they were like, oh, that girl that ran away from her parents. I was like, whoa, okay. So that, that's kind of what's being broadcasted to them. You know, that this kind of naughty girl has just kind of run away and, you know, she's just kind of faking it all. And, and obviously now there's the whole hashtag reveal Rahaf that Saudi are kind of putting forward, you know, to, to dis discredit her. Um, with sex, with, again, with, uh, the, to discredit her, somebody that left Islam, but all the, most of the stuff that they're trying to use to discredit her is with sex stuff again. Like, oh, she yes. was, she's sleeping around, yeah. from yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this is the yeah. go their go to <laughs> smear campaign for women yeah. is like oh look she's sleeping around yeah 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 and immediately and that that is part of especially I mean I know the Arab culture more than more than any other culture but you know with the Arabs it's like. If you're a slut, that's it. You know, that's it. You're, you're the bottom of the pile. If, if you've got a boyfriend, that's it. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's this mentality. So it's almost like they wouldn't even care at that point. They, it's like the, their humanity is gone. It's like, oh, okay, fine. If, if she was going to die, oh, she's had a boyfriend. Oh, fine. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, it's like they're so disconnected from, and it is this kind of brainwashing of, of, of how, how you're supposed to think about women. Um, that makes them think that that's perfectly fine. Um, but anyway, coming back to the positive. But yeah, I, I mean, I do think it's really, really changing uh, the game. And I, I didn't think it would happen that quickly, yeah. to be honest with you. So I'm really grateful and so happy that, like, as you said, it's almost become mainstream, which is so good. And I think the more people... Obviously, you guys know this, the more that we speak out, the more that this is... You know, people will start to question what their beliefs are and what they stand by. And a lot of people, a lot of, you know, normal kind of Muslims don't even think about, you know, the things that we're talking about. You know, I, I would talk to my cousins about slavery and they'd be like, what are you talking about? Obviously, slavery is not allowed. Like, uh, you know, I don't no, know. They don't know. They don't, they yeah, don't that's know. The exactly. They don't know. They, and they, they're like, no, but Islam teaches peace and Islam teaches equality. They, they just have their own understanding, you know? So if we're kind of like all putting this at the forefront, then it's like, oh, if if this is Islam, then maybe I can't stand by it. So I think right it's it's really I mean, good that's yeah. this is what this is the fact that you can even leave islam is not a known idea to most muslims yes. the fact that that's even an option and when a story like rahaf's goes viral and people are like wait what did she left islam like you can yeah. actually do that so so mm -hmm. i think that story going mainstream is is years worth of activism right there yeah so, 100%. I, 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 one one of the most important things I think uh, about this was that Canada gave her refugee status. That Krista Friedland and the Liberal government and Justin Trudeau came and stood out for her. The reason that I think that's really important is usually when you have somebody who's renounced Islam, it's uh, often you know you have the usual the the right wing, the conservative people. Yeah. You know, they come in and they yeah. rally around them, and and this is probably the first time at this scale that I've seen. Okay, someone came from Saudi Arabia who left Islam, and then you have actual liberal figures who are considered regressives almost yeah. coming up and rallying around her unconditionally and giving her a uh, refugee status and all the while you know all of these other governments like mm -hmm. the australian government and you know the u.s you know Trump, they they're all talking and uh speaking out about it a whole lot but when mm -hmm. it actually comes down to action they're not doing it so i think that that was very powerful to, to, for me to see, and not only as an ex-Muslim, but also as someone who's, who's liberal, to be yeah. to see that happen. To be fair, yeah. for the liberal community, that sorry, um, mm. for for the liberal community, that's going to be really transformative as well. Sorry, Armin. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead, Armin. No, feel free to interrupt me anytime. But mm -hmm. uh, to be fair, though, um, they didn't do it when 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 it was not so popular to be anti saudi when it came to Raif Badawi's case. Uh, yeah, Justin Trudeau completely ignored that case because Saudi Arabia was too big, too powerful too, uh, uh, at that time and mm -hmm. the, the money came before uh, human rights. But now yeah. with the Khashoggi case, it became easier to be anti saudi So yeah. this was an easier 
th easier battle now, especially with a few cases bet again between uh, Saudi Arabia and Canada. They already have been fighting, and, yeah, and, but I, I, and Armin, that, that's partially. Hold on, uh, I, I, but but, yeah, yeah, but but it's but it's it was it's, it was such an easy thing to do because a lot of support was also for. Uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I'm. I'm, I'm not grateful. I am grateful, but we should also still criticize. We should now use this case for saying, okay, now what about Rafe? What about Hakeem? Yeah. What about, yeah. because if you're supporting, yeah, yeah. Because, no, just stop there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah. A, just a small a correction to what you said, Armin. And I, I actually do agree with you. I think that mm -hmm. this is, uh, this is what I was saying about the power of the ex Muslim community. Now that they're big enough, mm -hmm. they've moved mm -hmm. on from grassroots that they have, uh, some level of their breaking into the mainstream influence uh, that uh, the politicians are listening to. Politicians listen to whatever has more voice, right? So right. That's how democracy works. But just a small correction to this is that uh, when Krista Friedland tweeted that thing about Samar Badawi and when uh, Saudi-Canadian diplomatic uh, ties actually initially broke, that was before Khashoggi. That was before the Khashoggi killing. So so they'd actually, um, in the, in this case, uh, right. They taken and they had privately. Uh, they every time they met privately, they would talk to the Saudi government about the Raif Badawi case. But uh, yeah. because then Saf lives here, so that has been happening. They just haven't gotten any traction with it uh, because the Saudis are no, very I, but I, but that's not a but, correction. Uh, the, but that was actually one of the reasons the Samar Badawi and Raif Badawi that the Saudis eventually had enough of Canada was pestering them, right. and that's why they broke the diplomatic ties. But, but, yeah, but, mm -hmm. but, but what I'm saying is that they sh could have gone publicly with that. It would have been a lot more pressure, but the, I'm not saying nothing happened before the Khashoggi case, but I'm saying with the Khashoggi case, now the whole world can be it's more, a lot easier. It's a lot easier to be anti-Saudi. Most politicians look do a cost-benefit analysis, and because of the Khashoggi case, the benefit of being anti-Saudi now is a lot more. It's, yeah. it's it's not always about human rights. It's about popularity, uh, what's popular or not. But even if it's that, we'll take it. Whatever, whatever yeah. we can take. It, it is, we we'll get. take it. And, and yeah. compared to, yeah. and and you got to say, even after this Khashoggi case right now, even though it is a lot easier to take these stands, mm. um, Trump still isn't doing it. Trump is still singing the praises of MBS. Yeah, but that's what about is though? No, no it, it is. It, yeah. uh, no, it's it's not totally what about It's yeah. a, it's an exposition of it hypocrisy is. Right. because. Because what's happening is like, you know, he's talking all about it, radical Islam, we got to crack down a radical Islam. But even after the Khashoggi right. thing, you know, he's always talking about free speech. But after the Trump Khashoggi is a thing, low standard to compare people to <laughs> Aus the Australian government, <laughs> the, <Rahab's case. laughs> the Australian government, the conservative Australian government in, in Rahaf's case, who's right. not a fan of Trump necessarily, hmm. but they hmm. also kind of dropped the ball on this. A, a yeah. lot of other people have dropped them. The UK has dropped the ball on, on a lot of things. And, I, and I, I see a BB. Like what the on hell? Asia, BB, they openly said that they're not going to. Canada is still trying to work with the Pakistani government. The biggest obstacle in but getting Asia BB to Canada yeah. is the the Pakistani government, right? Because uh, so so there is. A, but all of these conservative governments who are just blowhards and they're always talking about yeah Islam this Islam that. When it comes down to action and giving Asia BB refugee status, when it comes to Rahaf, the Rahaf's case, when it comes to uh, all of these other things, taking a stand against Saudi Arabia, breaking diplomatic ties, the only people who've done it is here. And I know I'm biased because I'm Canadian, but the only people yeah. who've actually done it are here in Canada. That they're came too late, but they took a stand. Um, yeah. So going back, anyway, going back going to back, yeah. yeah, going back to you. Do people mention to mention to you? I think. They do actually. I'm pretty sure they do. Then why can't you just leave Islam? Why do you? Okay, fine. Leave Islam. Go yeah. away. Why do you yeah. have to still talk about it? Why are you so obsessed yeah. with Islam? If you left Islam, just stop talking about it. Do they say? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and what do you um, say? Um, so I get, I get. Um, I mean, people comment that. I get my family members. I, I literally actually just had. A family member just kind of write me a long email just this morning about like maybe she could have accepted if I had left or obviously she would have had a conversation with me but it's because of the videos that we can no longer uh, be in contact and that was kind of her way of cutting me off basically um so yeah it, it, it there, there is this kind of way of like you know can't you just leave quietly and sit in the corner um <laughs> but, but but yeah I mean Obviously, I always kind of come back with, you know, it's 
I try to explain it to them. It's very difficult, especially when they're in a rage like that. But it's um, obviously it's to normalize the, mm. the fact that, you know, why is it such a shock? Why is it what, you know, even just in, in a comparison of looking at kind of Christians and Jews and other people out there? They've got, you know, people in their families that aren't religious. And it's like, oh, you know, Bill's not religious. That's just how he is, you know, whatever. And it's just kind of casual. Um, but it, it's never like that with with Muslims. And it's, you know, you, you're kind of, I, I feel like with the family that I'm in as well, obviously, you know, they're, they're, they're not as extreme as many others out there. So I almost feel it's kind of my duty to be part of something that could help normalize this idea of mm. leaving Islam. Um, and so because of that, I mean, my plan actually was just to do that Why I Left Islam video. And then I just kind of kept coming up with different ideas. I was like, oh, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do this. And it kind of just happened just kind of naturally. But it, it, I, I just wanted to put out there, hi guys, I'm this, this is, I'm an ex-Muslim. This should be okay. We should be accepting of, of one one another. But also, it, not just that I'm an ex-Muslim, but just the idea of blasphemy as well. So it's those two things, you know, kind of the fact that I, I've left Islam, but we can still be a happy, loving community and we don't have to kill me. Um, and then also the idea of, you know, kind of talking about Islam and criticizing Islam. So it's those two things. Because even as a Muslim, you can't really criticize too, too much. So, um, you know, kind of if you look at comedians for example you know they, they don't touch Islam most of the time um and uh you know um, uh, myself and uh, Mr Mr Mimsy um we uh, <laughs> we, uh, we we we've kind of spoken about because we we're, we're really into obviously really into like comedy and we kind of watch a lot of stand up and stuff and um yeah so for us it's always been kind of like well why haven't they done that why can't they do that what well, you know um so that that's it it's it's to normalize it and obviously to prevent uh you know in the bigger picture to kind of allow people to kind of live their lives and hopefully as i said i i sometimes used to say well maybe it's not going to happen in my lifetime that's why that's why i kind of thought it's like way ahead that this but this rahaf thing has made me kind of be like oh wow this is really this is really happening quicker than i thought yeah and and that yeah. that word normalize is such, such an important thing i'm, I'm glad that yeah. you said that because as not every ex-muslim ha has to do this but the ones that choose to do this are they they're just trying to make it easier easier for the future mm -hmm. ex-Muslims to make their path a little bit easier right it's kind of mm -hmm. it's kind of like saying like oh you're 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 a former addict you're not you're you're not addicted to heroin anymore so just stop go ahead and be living your life why are you trying to help the other addicts like what the hell because kind of, that's a dumb question right because <laughs> well because you're you're trying to give them the same experience but this yeah. is the, your answer actually goes to this another um question Muslims ask ex-Muslims is like, why do we have the word ex-Muslims? We don't have ex-Jew, not community. Yeah. We don't have an ex-Christian community. And it goes to, and I, I'm not trying to dismiss the experiences. A lot of Jews go through a lot of difficult situation when they leave Judaism and a lot of Christians do experience this as, as well. But I think because yeah. the challenges for the Muslim community is a bit unique, is that why we have our own ex-Muslim community? And we do actually have ex-Jehovah uh, witness community, which because they have their own unique experience, or ex-Mormons, they do. We do have a big ex-Mormon community, so we don't have that much of an ex-Christian community. But given that we do have ex-Mormon and ex, because they also use a lot of the tactics that Muslims face when they're leaving Islam, like the shaming and the yeah. ostracization and the demonization they experience as, as well. And that's why they have their own. Um, do you get that question? Why, why, why do you have to call yourself ex-Muslim? Christians don't call themselves a, a Christians who yeah. are atheists. Not, go on. Sorry. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, what you said as well, I, I didn't mean to, because with, with Christians and Jews that leave, obviously they there's not all kind of simple and easy for everyone that's in those communities it's just it's just more so that the, the comparison factor of overall i think but it's definitely for anyone that leaves a religion you know it's difficult but as you said the ones that have called the mix mm -hmm. um it's because of the level of kind of shaming and the level of I mean, uh, apostasy is a, a death penalty. Uh, yeah. how, how bad can, can, you know, how bad can you get? Um, so 
it, it's exactly what I, and it, it goes with what I said. It's about kind of saying I'm this, um, but it's okay. It's, it's, it's exactly that. It's normalizing the fact that I have been a Muslim. Um, but also I kind of like the idea of, uh, this is where my hippie comes in. So I kind of like the idea of, um, you know, being a community still. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like, well, you guys sit over there and you sit over there kind of thing. You know, like I'd, I'd, I'd like, um, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a Muslim, um, but it's these they're my family, they're, they're, the, the people are my community and have been um, for so long. So it's um, I, I've become like a kind of like beg friend, like kind of like just, you know, let's just still kind of be cool and let's just make it work. And I'm trying to not divorce myself from everyone. And, and it's like now I've got different beliefs. See you guys later. I don't want it to be like that. And I think if we can kind of have this acceptance of we can still be yeah. a family and still be together then that's part of so what I'm doing. It's kind of like that's the gay actually, rights movements, right? Like before, um, yeah. at some point, we, it's, we're gonna be so normalized that the Muslim, a Muslim family, are like, oh yeah, our daughter is ex-Muslim, I guess. Well, yes. and it's gonna be uh, okay. We're going, Ellie. Yeah, that's why uh, it's okay. a you can do coming out videos. It's sort of yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I mean, they're they're very powerful. Right. Yeah. Um, I I think uh, another coming out video, why I left Islam video that I really liked was the uh, the Lustamir video as well. Oh yeah. Classic. So I I wanted to I mean so you're talking about this wanting to be part of you know the community aspect versus the ideology aspect. You know how do yes. you how can you you know this why does changing your mind about the ideology mean that you have to completely get rid of everything you know yeah. community wise that you knew your whole life so i wanted to kind of talk about the flip side of that so you said um that you know you live in a in a, in a you still live in a uh, muslim community mm -hmm. uh, you talked about uh, some of your friends who you know when you told them about why like, slavery and they said no 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 we we don't we, Islam doesn't have slavery, and yeah. the, all they've been taught by their parents is that you know it, it tells you to be a good person, treat other people yeah. nicely, and yeah. you know a couple of other things. Five so, pillars, that's it. Yeah, the five pillars. So, so <laughs> what is the? Um, do you find yourself? Because we talk about this. This is this idea that people who are ex-Muslim now are very anti all Muslims, and mm. uh, and I, I, I know I, I think I speak for Armin here too. The both of us have realized that we actually have a little bit more compassion for Muslims. Mm -hmm. Now that we're ex Muslim, for the, for the same reason that you mentioned, that a lot of people, they're just kind of born into it. They don't really know, they haven't read about it. So, zooming out into the overall the whole political atmosphere right now, there mm -hmm. is, you know, you have a problem with Islam. I know that this has happened with me a lot. That there are a lot of people who are, who are actually anti Muslim. You know, they want to get rid of all Muslims. Oh, yeah. And, to get deported and mm -hmm. they have kind of uh, glommed on to my message and the stuff that I say because they think that I'm somehow supporting uh, giving a supporting argument to their cause uh, have you experienced that and yeah how do I you, just what do you think about it one yeah. of my most recent videos um I did for exactly what what we were just talking about I, I called it um why what I love about Muslims um and oh and it's basically just a video on the aspects I love about the Muslim community, you know, for example, you know, if you go, uh, Morocco is kind of known for this um, as well, you know, random, I get, at uni, I used to always have random people tell me like, oh, you're from Morocco, I went to Morocco and I just got invited into a random household and they fed me and, you know, and Walid has the same kind of stories, uh, Mr. Menzi has the same kind of stories of <laughs> like Pakistan, you know, like people are very kind of welcoming and warm and there is this kind of culture of like feeding and nurturing and, you know, there are there are obviously good things about the Muslim community. Um, so I wanted to highlight that and I did that on purpose. And I literally saw my subscribers like, dee, 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 like decrease. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, we'll see you later. But, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I had, I had people comment like, well, I liked your videos up until this one. Um, it's, called but, cleansing, it's called cleansing your audience. Yeah, exactly. The mean, uh, your talks. mean subscriber count will fall, but their their mean uh, subscriber IQ will rise. And that's usually what the, yeah, the consequences. Yeah, yeah. but, but um, that, that's fine. I mean, it's not at all. You know, I try very hard when I kind of make the videos that are even criticizing to be very careful with how I say things because I never want it to come across that way because I want it essentially to be for everyone to to watch. You know, whether you're kind of if you're not Muslim and you're 
hating Muslims for you to kind of not use this as a weapon like oh yeah watch this video but at the same time I don't want it to be um you know for Muslims to kind of be like whoa like this is like you're being so horrible to us so yeah I do try and find that balance um of kind of making it about the ideology and making it about the scripture um and kind of divorcing that from muslims as much as i can um but yeah i definitely i definitely have the kind of hardcore people as i said that they all kind of don't like me anymore a lot of them don't like my dad either because my dad's very airy fairy and you know he kind of doesn't like to i mean he's, he's his videos are so good and he he calls himself a muslim he likes to call himself a muslim still so he definitely wants um you know to kind of have have that marriage between his views and being an agnostic muslim so um so a lot of people don't like him for that and he gets lots of criticism for that as well and we should go into the live chat question there's a lot of questions there but before we do i want to mention based on just touch on what you said uh with a favorite quote of mine from alishba uh yeah. which is the most people are i think this is how it goes most people are b better than the uh scripture yeah. that they hold sacred Mo most yeah most humans are more moral than the and scriptures that they hold sacred, sacred yes that's what, yeah okay that's a, that's that's a, a, yeah. Hit, hit that's a classic <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah okay so so let's do this let's go into the uh patron questions there are a lot thank Mzi, you for everyone very, in your live chat yeah you're very popular yeah so, this is oh, one of, yeah, this is our this is our only patron live chat. So it's usually very uh, small number of people. But given that how many people showed up shows how popular this episode yeah. is. Thank this you, is thank you everyone that. for showing. It might also be because thank we. Thank you. Yeah, but thank you for everyone for showing up and. Might also have question. been because of something else. <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was going to say that, but then you said thank you, so I stopped. <laughs> I realized. I realized. You I realized. Know, but the, the timing. I, mean, I, mean, I don't think of myself as super popular. I feel like I've just started. Like I've, I'm, I'm, no, I'm the, the topic, the but the topic is a very popular topic. Exactly. You, you, you know yeah. what? Actually, I'll tell you one of the weird things about doing this these podcasts is that you kind of do them at home while you're going about your life and you take out a couple of times, you do this and then you go back to your life and you don't realize. And then you go over to, uh, you know, the Netherlands or wherever you go and loads of people come up and they're like, I listen to your podcast. And you're like, what? Really? It's, it's not, it's not a very obvious kind of thing, but, uh, when you when you look at the numbers, I mean, you've got over two hundred thousand views on your very first video, right? Yeah, yeah for that for, for that one, yeah. I mean, I, I get recognised, especially if I'm with Vidu Vids. If I'm if I'm with Willie, especially if I'm with him, we get recognised quite a lot here. Um, but that's yeah. kind where, of Muslim dance. Where Sorry, can pe yeah. where can people find your channel again? Just and we're gonna ask it then. Like, you just search for Mimsy. Yeah. And yeah, then, so it's, it's just youtube.com slash Mimsy Vids. I mean, just mim, type Mimsy Vids and it will show. It'll, it'll come up. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, right. Patreon questions, Sally. Okay, let's do this. So the first one's from Renzo. Um, uh, Renzo saying there's been a lot of talk about Sharia courts in the UK, which the previous Labour government sanctioned. Uh, did you have any personal experience with that? No. I mean, that's not something that's uh, the the. They sanctioned the Sharia courts in England. Yeah, I mean, we do, we do. There are kind of a few organisations that have it, but it's, yeah, it's not really involved in the kind of bigger scheme of, of of what's happening here. It's not involved in the bigger courts at all. It's just within the Muslim communities, and they would have that regardless. So it doesn't it doesn't really have much of an effect on us. But it's recognised okay. as a like as a separate court system, isn't that kind of like uh, isn't isn't it like is it? Isn't it? Not really. No. It's more, and it's very specific. It's more to do with like their marriages and the divorces and that sort of thing. It's kind of, um, yeah, it's, it doesn't have, it doesn't override kind of anything within the English law system. Um, so yeah, it, do, it doesn't, it doesn't, it is just kind of family, family kind of situations, but, um, mm. Yeah, it's 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 not that big of a deal. I think a lot of people talk about that as if it's like taking over, but it's it's not really not yet. Anyway, God. Yeah, they they, they can't <laughs> supersede the actual court. Okay, so, good, good. Uh, so uh, uh, Saba is asking. Saba's a new uh, member here, so welcome, Saba. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for the question, um, Mimsy. What are your views about women who have? I think she's talking about hijabi women who have most views like yours and are educated and liberal, and they hang out with non-Muslims. Uh, and don't think ill of, uh, about any non-hijabi 
or, or the, the woman who actually choose it. Sorry, what? So the question was. So the I, people. What do you think about the people that are educated liberal uh, Muslims that choose to wear the hijab? Is that right? Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, and they don't. They hang out with non-Muslims and. They don't uh, think ill about non-hijabis, uh, the women who actually choose it. What do I think of them? <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, you know, if that if that's I, I, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. I think that's that that's the person I definitely was at one point. Um, you know, where if you kind of have no judgment and you want to wear the hijab because you believe it's kind of protecting you from something or it's your identity and. I mean, I don't really have have much towards it. As, to be honest with you, I don't I don't care what what you do as a Muslim necessarily, unless it's kind of to do with violence or you know you're hurting other people. I I, I don't really mind what other people do. Yeah, I I would uh, actually add another thing from like Armin quoted Lishba earlier. Another I'm quoting Lishba on this, like she looks at the hijab the way that people look at the Confederate flag. Mm. She says, you know, you have the freedom to use it you have the freedom to fly it whatever you want to do you might think of it as a symbol of identity or a symbol yeah. of heritage but that doesn't erase the history of why it came to be like that the symbol has a history and that history is still there you know so right yeah but, uh, no, no, I, go ahead, you go. I, I just i just think it's just it's, it's what you make it as well i don't i don't I'm not, i wouldn't i would just, you know if someone wanted to wear it i wouldn't not stand by the, their right to wear it. You know, it's kind of just like yeah. I think, but I, I think that those are two separate questions. Whether somebody, when whether we support someone's right to do something and whether we agree with them doing it are completely separate things, right? I right. mean, I, I agree with someone's right to wear the Nazi swastika. I I support their right to do that as well, but I don't support. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with them doing it, but I support their right to do it. So those are two separate things, and I think. Yeah. When it comes to the hijab, I think all of us here support the right for people to wear the hijab. But right, okay. whether we agree with people wearing the hijab, we I think we don't. But I think a lot of people yeah. think that might come off as too hostile towards people that wear it. But like, no, disagreeing with people is just like it's not as hostile as you think it is. It's just we yeah. disagree with it. I'm pretty sure we do a whole bunch of stuff that you probably disagree with as well. We could disagree and let you know why we disagree and get along at the same time. I mean, there's nothing mm -hmm. hostile about disagreeing with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly it. Yeah, I don't, I don't kind of think the hijabs, uh, uh, I mean, I, obviously, if I thought it was great, I'd be wearing it, you know, so, um, you know, it's not, it's not something I agree with. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah exactly yeah. what you said. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have several close friends and relatives who wear the hijab and most recently over Christmas went out, it was one of their birthdays and I went to their birthday, it was a Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. and it was, I mean, she's a hijabi, she didn't drink, but everybody else out there had drinks. It was a Mexican restaurant and there was one of those big Mexican hats the, that, that you yeah. wear and she wore it over her hijab. As I was thinking, I was like, oh, this is Trump's worst nightmare. It's like a Muslim <laughs> woman wearing a Mexican hat. And, uh, you know, she was, I, I, we had, uh, like, she is exactly what Saba is describing here. And she's, you know, everybody around her, her siblings, all of us, you know, we all drink alcohol. But she knows yeah. that I'm an atheist, uh, all of that. And somehow yeah. it just never comes up. So I, I, I they do like exist. When people do that, I don't know, but because it just sounds like my, I, I was like that. I mean, I used to go towards the end, I used to go to bars with my friends with hijab, you know, um, and just, just hang out with, with whoever I wanted to do, whatever I wanted to do, as long as it wasn't drinking and, you know. Oh, and, and her husband drinks too. Her husband actually, and she's totally all good ah, with it. Like, okay. It's really, yeah. I don't know. I kind of think it's like a way, uh, maybe that, uh, I don't know. I feel like someone that's kind of okay with that will eventually, it depends what kind of person you are, but you kind of eventually then start to kind of relax yeah. on other things. You slowly, slowly relax on and then, and then it come, becomes a sort of journey of like, oh, maybe I don't believe in any of it. I've seen that, seen that a lot as well, where it's kind of bit by bit. And obviously Muslims will say, well, that's shaitan, isn't it? Because then, you know, <laughs> Satan is kind of getting to you bit by bit. And if you hang out in those bars, if you do that kind of stuff, then eventually you won't be Muslim because of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, there Ali, is that, Ali, like, we have, Ali, we have a lot of questions to go through. We have, yeah. But uh, just one last thing, I think that there are a lot of the women who wear it 
especially nowadays, because they think there's a lot of, this is what I've heard. There's a lot of women who hear that because there's a lot of anti-Muslim sentiment, they wear it as a way of identity, but they have ideological issues with it. So it's actually yeah. a very complicated topic. Very. Anyway, well, uh, really. I'll, I'll move on. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Next question. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, comments, but I want to get to, uh, the questions sure as well, and these comments will be up for anybody who wants to come if you're checking it out. No, don't okay, so miss it. Don't miss them because I am really grateful that people make sure if there is actually a question, we read them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm definitely doing that. So, uh, Cicel is asking. Cicel is also new here, so thank you. This is your um, uh, Cicel for joining us again. Uh, he's saying, uh, here, I am writing an essay in my university about the selfish gene. Selfish okay. gene is like the the the, the first Richard Dawkins book. Um, mm -hmm. My teachers say that this book is so, quote, <laughs> political. I have no idea what they mean. I see nothing political about it. What are your opinions? Uh, I, mean, you have? I, haven't, I haven't read it myself. Armin obviously has. He's got it, he's got it to hand there. Yeah, I have, a, <laughs> I have a signed copy. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a really oh, you're good hanging book. out with, with all the, the cool dudes now. <laughs> Armin, that's when you know you've made it, when you're hanging out with Richard Dawkins. Hey, when, we were with, uh, when we were at the conference in 2017 in Toronto, Armin was here. Uh, yeah. Richard Dawkins actually gave, he had Armin's book, right? So he came to Armin and he gave him, he's like, can you sign this for me? And Armin's face. Oh, MG. <laughs> <laughs> I would have like fainted. No, I'm kidding. It was like, it's like if a Dawah man had yeah. met the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, literally, literally. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. oh my God. I would be telling that story to everyone. <laughs> I was so happy Ali was there because nobody would have believed that. <laughs> oh, he's, he's fantastic. <laughs> Richard is so supportive of uh, uh, ex-Muslims and the ex-Muslim community. He was one of the yeah. earliest supporters. Yes. Like he did the cover blurb for my book. And he's uh, just, I mean, we, we spent that entire weekend with him and I mean, he's fantastic. But anyway, as Selfish Gene, he wrote in 1975 and that was a real big breakthrough. So Armin, I love this you want to take that? But no, do you I mean, think it's political? No. What the hell? I don't understand that question. Yeah. So tell them to, uh, did the person actually read the book before that said this political? No. Yeah. I think they just looked at the author and they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing political about let me, it. So let me tell you how now. Actually, I have a very really good answer to this. Before Richard Dawkins was famous for being an atheist activist, he was, way, he was already famous for being a famous, for being a, uh, biologist, biologist, evolutionary yeah. biologist, right? And when I, when he was famous for that, I was in Iran. I was in University of Tehran, and the selfish gene. Our our teacher told us that we need to read the selfish gene. So if it was political, I don't think in a, in an Iranian university in Tehran University they would be telling you to read the selfish gene. Yeah, but uh, so yeah, the selfish gene is a book that came out the year I was born. So it came out in 1975. A biology class, like cellular biology it's a, class. Yeah, it, yeah, and it is a foundation. It was one of the most influential books uh, in evolutionary biology ever. Just the, the and so so I I don't know what's political about it. About apart from that, yeah, there could be two issues. One is Richard Dawkins. He's an atheist, and he's sort of obviously that's political. Uh, the second thing that could be political is evolution is a controversial topic for some. A bizarre reason, uh, even though it's complete fact, we see it in front of our eyes with antibiotic resistance. We have, right. we know it happens. We have looked into DNA, and our DNA says that it happened. It's a fact. It's a scientific. We have fact, a good episode on this with Jerry Coyne. So with Jerry Coyne, so go check it out. Our uh, yeah. we had a, an episode on evolution with, uh, or on science and faith, actually in general, yeah. with an evolutionary biologist from the University of Chicago, Jerry Coyne. Yeah, uh, it was pretty renowned. Really as well. good episode. So, that was a very yeah. fun episode. So it was a, a great episode. Okay, so um, okay, let's move on. Uh, Saba saying Rahaf's story is bizarre. So happy. Uh, at how many voices on Twitter came together and demanded freedom for her. That was awesome. How social activism actually saved her. Hope she yeah. remains safe. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. We're, we're all very, very happy about the way that that turned out. And it was, it was long overdue. Um, okay, so another question. Majid Nawaz and Imam Tawhidi. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with Imam Tawhidi? So they're trying to reform. Yes, yeah, they're trying to reform the understanding Muslims Oof. have about the Quran and practicing Islam. Do you support that, or do you think it won't work in the long run? Armin, let, let Mimsy answer I'm first. I'm going to stay quiet in this one for now, because this will be a whole reform yes. episode. If yes, it's Armin, you can stay. Okay, oh, good. no, I'm scared now. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay, I'm uh -huh. about reform. I, I, I do think... 
So I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about it more recently. I haven't, I didn't ever think about it before, but I think it's, it's a, a good thing, essentially. I, I know Armin disagrees with me, <laughs> but I, 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 you know, for me, I will always stand by my ideas, my thoughts of it. it it's bullshit, essentially, all of it. But if you want to believe in something for whatever reason, as long as you, if you think, okay, I want to believe in this, I'm going to cut the crap out. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to like simplify this, this argument. Um, then, um, then I'm okay with that. Like, it, for me, the problem I have with uh, the ideology of Islam is the violence and is the problems that it causes. And um, I kind of feel like because of the fact that it's violent and it's people dying and it's people in danger, I kind of feel desperate, which I know it sounds weird, but I feel like, look, if that work, make it happen. If, 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 if you're going to convert a bunch of people and stop a bunch of people from dying, then do it because you're going to save a bunch of people. Um, and I kind of also think when you start to change things and you look at things differently, it will create a wave <laughs> eventually of people kind of slowly looking elsewhere or perhaps looking slightly away from Islam anyway. I think I think that's kind of a natural thing that'll happen. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I have my views. And if you, as I said, if, if you want to kind of have a different version of it that cuts out the crap, then go ahead. That's kind of my yeah, view on the problem. I just really quickly, for, I, when those people that are going through the phase, those are people like you that are looking for the truth. They're not just looking through, you know, they're, even if they go through that path, it's not because yeah. that path was necessary. The path was be because they were upset. They were unhappy with what we were saying because it didn't make any yeah. sense. We were, they were always looking for the truth. They weren't, they weren't right. looking for a different kind of bullshit. They were looking okay. for the truth. And, yeah. But, but, you know, I always, I, I always say it, if you allow harmless nonsense without evidence, belief in harmless nonsense without evidence, you're yeah. also opening the door for belief in harmful nonsense without evidence. Yeah. You're, the you're filter, training people, the filter, you're training it, people to think illogically and, yeah. and to think uncritically. I don't so know if it's them bigger things. I don't know yeah. if it's one or the other though. I don't know if we kind of, you know, sh I don't know how we would shut down reform anyway. But if, if for example, we're not you know, shutting it down. We, but, but let's just say people are looking at other versions of Islam. Mm -hmm. That's not silencing other people from saying it's bullshit. It, I don't think of it as one or the other. You know, if if it is a bunch of people saying it's bullshit, and then a bunch of people saying, well, we can look at it this way. Um, it just doesn't bother me. It's not, I'm not kind of like necessarily, I'm for reform in the sense of, I think something should happen right now. Cause I, I don't know, in the way I see it is I just don't, I, as I said, I feel desperate. I feel like I, d I don't think it will happen overnight where like Saudi Arabia will be like, oh, okay, um, cool. Like we're not gonna do this. So in my, the way that I see it is if Saudi Arabia can think actually like Morocco have they've been like oh actually we'll cut out the apostasy thing maybe it's not relevant we'll update this if any other government can do that then please <laughs> but that is reform but that's not reforming Islam because if you cut out apostasy that's a good thing to uh, so if you cut out the death penalty for apostasy that's a good yeah. thing I'm not yeah. against that but Islam yeah. will always be for death for, uh, for the death penalty for that's just you reforming. That's I'm I'm for Muslims reforming for countries right. reforming. I say right. it's bullshit. It's bullshit to suggest Islam is reforming. And if you say Islam is reforming, that is basically providing a cover up for it to last longer. I see. I see. Oh, okay. So yeah. we we agree on that then. Yeah. We, I, that, I, I mean that, that that's not. That, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that that's the idea that you know if you have. Muslim reform, and that includes ex-Muslim voices, that includes liberal Muslim voices, or trying, and includes dialogue without threat of, you know, disownment or you know, ostracization or yeah. or execution or whatever. Right, exactly. uh, then, uh, then that's that's that that kind of thing is good. I try not so, to say anything. I couldn't help myself. Sorry. That is possibly the shortest exchange on reform we've had on this podcast, Armin. <laughs> so I want to congratulate you. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So George Cordahi, George Cordahi, I love George. George lives in my neighborhood. This is a 
amazing. Thank you, George, for asking a question. Now, but he's asking about this, and this is actually a serious issue. So he mentioned one of the Rahaf Twitter names. He's saying, is it a real account? Was it hacked? Do I yeah. misunderstand that post? Unfortunately, George, there are many, many different Rahaf accounts that are online. Some of them are uh, kind of trying to um, uh, disparage her. There are mm -hmm. others that are pretending to be her and trying to raise money and uh, they're and they're they're all fake and I, I really hope Twitter verifies her at some point so the people who know know who the real Rahaf is. So yeah, just be on the lookout for that and yeah. uh, to, to try and see if you have the right account or not. Yeah, um, and report it if you don't. Know. I've been like reporting them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's right. Yeah, report them if you see something that is very obviously a fake Rahaf account. Uh, then yeah, absolutely report it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's most of the questions. There are some more comments. Um, someone is talking, I think Hazem is talking about hijab and saying that they should be allowed to wear it and should be treated like everybody else. But it's hard to say who's feeling what, when it's enforced the way it is by society mm -hmm. and governments now. And yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think that's a very yeah. important point. Like when it's forced, um, I've seen enough nuances with the whole hijab thing uh, here that when I look at somebody who's wearing hijab, even here in the West, even here in Canada, I can't look at them and automatically assume that, okay, they're, uh, they think a certain way because, yeah, mm -hmm. often they're not. And uh, mm -hmm. there's, I've gone out for drinks with people who wear hijab. I have had hijabi people mm -hmm. show up at my events and tell me mm -hmm. that they're ex-Muslims. <laughs> Um, yeah. right. I'm, I'm not just talking about once or twice. I'm talking, this is a fairly common thing. Uh, when I was in the Netherlands, uh, when I were there, I saw that uh, a lot. Actually, at all three of my events, there were people who wore the hijab. Uh, one was even wearing a full-on uh, hijab book, uh, and she came up and uh, wondering what she was doing at the event. And I thought that she would be um, maybe ask a question, disagree, but she came up and she said, "Yes, you know, I am. Uh, I am a closeted ex-Muslim." So. Yeah, um, and I get a lot of emails. Like, I mean, supposedly I can't even get through all of them, and they're a lot from the Middle East, kind of Arabs. A lot of them, a lot, of, some of them, are kind of you know, in Arabic, where they're just saying, like, I, I don't know what to do. I'm watching your videos. You know, I can't even comment on your videos. So many people, because I always think, why are my comments all like hate? <laughs> Where's everyone else? Um, but uh -huh. like, yeah. Guys, guys, go to her channel, leave some supportive <laughs> comments. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, you're getting a lot of supportive comments here. Someone's saying that you're oh, very fun. You. Uh, people are very, yeah, yeah they really, sorry. really, really are liking you a but lot. Go on, finish. Sorry, you're interrupted. Uh -huh. but, but yeah, no, I get a lot of emails saying I can't even comment on your video because in case someone sees me and I have to live this life. There's so many Muslims and more than, more than I imagined kind of living this kind of fake life. Right. And that's what motivates you to keep to keep doing, keep making videos about it. That, that's definitely, as I said, I didn't even plan to kind of keep going. I thought I'll put out my video of why I left and my coming out and we'll kind of mess around a bit on YouTube. But that's it. And when I saw kind of all the all these kind of flood ins of people kind of saying their situations, it's like, wow. Anyway, sorry, I, you want to get through some questions? Yeah. No, no, that's it. No, this that is your, the, your, it's your time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, me yeah. and Ellie, Ellie uh, we should talk less so that you, she could answer the question. Mo yeah. Ask questions that are more directly to her than, than us. Yeah, so, I, well, I mean, I'm just asking the questions that are mm -hmm. here. Okay. Uh, we're almost done with them, actually. There, was, okay, uh, good, there good, are good. actually a lot more comments and questions. But Marigo is saying, uh, Mimsy, I want to know if you've noticed this too. Muslims in the UK seem bent on making sure Islam isn't criticized mm -hmm. and will try to twist the law and other groups into supporting them. Uh, uh, yeah, twist the law and in groups. I don't, I don't know what that means, but I mean, there, there's definitely. I mean, I haven't really lived anywhere else, so I, it's, it's hard for me to compare. But, but yeah, there's a, there's a hardcore group of Muslims here for sure, and a huge dawa scene. You know, kind of spreading Islam. I mean, you in the areas that we live in, you know, you walk out and you'll always see a stall out there of like you know whatever like come to islam you know so um it's a big thing and because i grew up in the community at that school i know a lot of them so a lot of them know me and they know my dad um so it's kind of yeah so i i do know the community really really well i'm embedded in that kind of um they're, they're quite there, there are a lot strict i've heard from other people that they're a lot stricter than like the american muslim community for some reason they're 
this is all I've heard, so I, I don't know if this is correct, but apparently in America, they're a bit more kind of involved with being American and we're American Muslims and, you know, uh, you know, they kind of feel part of the country. Whereas here, you definitely, you know, the plan is you leave England, you know, you, if you're here, that's great. But the plan is you're going to go to a Muslim country. Even I, at one point was like, well, maybe I should go to Dubai or something because I, you know, I can't live here, you know, because the plan's always to have a Muslim country, to be with Muslims. There's no real connection with the British community here. Um, it's kind of just them and us, mm -hmm. definitely. And, it, it, you know, that's why we've got so many schools now. I mean, now there's loads of Muslim schools everywhere. And, you know, m my friends that I've grown up with, you know, some of them kind of took their kids out of school and are like homeschooling them or sending them. In fact, I've got a friend that is homeschooling her kids because she said even the Muslim schools aren't good enough. They're becoming too lenient. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're hardcore here for sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, w one more question. Um, there are some actually, comments yeah, the, that we yeah. should read as well. And also, um, yeah, yeah, there, there are. I'm, I'm getting to them. I, I wanted to ask you, actually, since we were talking about the, oh. the hardcore groups there, that there are also, um, uh, I, I wanted to get to this before we end because since we, ha we have you here, uh, that it, you know some of this you've seen the there's been the grooming gang scandal there yes. uh, there've been the whole Tommy Robinson issue yeah I made a video on that yeah grooming gang yeah and the and the Tommy Robinson and um uh the Majid Nawaz obviously you know they disagree on a lot of things even though they yeah. had their friends in the past and uh, how, how is that playing out do you think how is that influencing sort of UK society and how how is that playing out with the ex-Muslim movement and the Muslims uh, in in the UK. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not great news to be honest with you. No, everyone hates Majid. So Majid is is not Muslim to these Muslim. Uh, he, he, you know, he's um, he's just not considered a Muslim at all, and he's just part of that group. No one has respect for him. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, he's more I, well I, regarded here actually in in I've North heard. America. I've heard, and I, I've heard that American Muslims are quite different, which is really intriguing. It's like, what are you guys we should doing do an over episode there? On that. I think we should do an episode yeah. on that because we've noticed that a lot. There's a very, very huge difference. I, I think it might be that the way, I don't know why that's happened, but the divide that there is between the them and us culture here, that's kind of cultivated. And we have, maybe it's because, I don't know, but maybe it's because there's more Muslims here, so they've managed to kind of kind of create their own little communities and then just kind of cut off from the rest. <laughs> um, yeah. Because you, you see that, I mean, in my grooming gangs video, I um, talked about how in those areas where the grooming gangs happened, it was like 80% population Muslim um, areas. So it's like, they they kind of go out of their areas and then go to you know they they dehumanize these kind of you know white girls essentially they don't live near them they're not they don't go to school with them they just see them as, as these kind of like oh white people over there you know they're so far away from them even though they're in yeah. england I so, think you're, um, you're yeah. already addressing something that another thing marigo asked is why okay. do you think the british muslim community the british muslim community seems more aggressive yeah. than the american one by comparison or at least uh, well, that's how it wants to represent yeah. itself in the state. Yeah. It so, is. and I think you mentioned that. What, one more uh, question. I'll just try to get as many of these as possible. Uh, so, I was saying uh, many women who left Islam, like Yasmin Muhammad and uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali, had a traumatic past in their own families and people outcasted them. Uh, compared to such stories, do you think it was easier for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely easier for me. I mean, I, I've had people cut me off and never speak to me again. You know, people I've grown up with. For me, it's been like hurtful, obviously. But if you're comparing the two, I mean, um, absolutely. I mean, they've had kind of, you know, death threats and things like that. My, my, my family haven't um, kind of, you know, given me death threats. I've obviously had kind of strangers. But, um, but yeah, my, my family have just the worst that they've done is, is, is cut me off and never speak to me again. That's kind of, I'm just no one to them. That That's kind of it. So for me, that's, that's not as bad as it can be. So I'm okay with it, to be honest. It's kind of, oh, you know. Wow, you're very strong. Um, yeah. Ian is saying I'm disgusted. Ian or Ian? I forgot how he pronounced Ian. It's Ian. Ian, Ian Foot, yeah. Ian. Ian is saying, yeah, we had a Patreon episode with it. We should do more Patreon episodes. Uh, Ian is saying, I'm disgusted with the UK government over Asiya uh, BB. And he also points out that, uh, that I think the bigger atheist community counts for excretion since it started the 
they're in the West. Yeah, I agree. Uh, by the way, a lot of people are saying this timing is a lot better for the Mali. So we should do more. We should still have that time, uh, uh, and at, in, at night, but we should do more at this time as well for, for a lot of our European. Yeah, countries. I think, I think we can start doing that. That yeah. works for me too. The, uh, the, um, yeah, for Europe, I mean, we have the, we usually get the same. It's just more, we got more of the North American, uh, right. uh, right. patrons on the other one. And then we get uh, more of the Europe. Also, the series, guys, so cool. a, a lot of people tell us that we need to announce our episodes earlier. I wait on Ellie to send me the title and description. So it's on Ellie that they don't go up earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ellie's fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. nice okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting better at that. <laughs> okay. And, and yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll start again. And for for patrons who are watching this live, remember we've got Graham Wood coming on Thursday. Ooh, so yes. yeah, we'll do, we're gonna do that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so another. So here's some uh, here's some more comments. Uh, uh, Hazem is saying Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Hasidic Jews are tiny groups. Mm. Islam is the second largest religion in the world, and it acts like a cult, which is worrying. Armin, I think this is in response to right, that's what good you point. were saying. By the oh, way, yeah. uh, by the way, uh, Ali is not reading them because there's so many of them, but a lot yeah. of people are telling you how much they love you, Mimsy. I, I don't know if you see the live Aww. chat. A lot of people really is yeah. showing you support. Uh, because Mimsy, so you're a very fun, fun person. Yeah. You yeah. are among Mimsy's the... Amazing. The most awesome ex-Muslims. So yeah, you're getting a lot of. Uh, um, sort of saying Mimsy is amazing. A lot of mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of hearts and smiley faces. So I just. Oh, yeah. thanks, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> I d I'm just an awkward like I'm really British about like compliments. I, I just get really awkward. I don't know what to say, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ian Ian is saying I support reform to the extent it secularizes the Muslim community, but I think the ex-Muslim movement is more effective and more desirable long term. And what? yeah, I, I actually agree with this. No, I don't. Times. I haven't. No, he's saying your point, Armin. He's saying the no, but I'm going to, but I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to try to get that, even that small support that he has for the reform movement that way. I'm going to convince him out of that. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's why I think that the ex Muslim movement is more effective is because I hear people all the time saying, okay, no, I left Islam. I left Islam. There's a huge community around it. I mean, that that's what Rahaf did. That This is what you're seeing. But I'm not seeing a lot of people saying, oh, you know what? I've seen the light. Now I'm going to be a reformer. Like, that just does not happen. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's funny true. we're laughing about it, right? So it's, it's uh, true, yeah. <laughs> it's just, that, that's not the direction that people go in. Where are the people that uh, when say that, we, we let's not get rid of Nazism as a whole. Let's maybe just reform Nazism. Maybe there's some white nationalist people that could just, we, we could give them a different form of, White supremacy that is not as bad, yeah, you know. I, let's I not throw it. I don't. I think that's a simplistic analogy. I know, I but I, I'm trying you. to. I'm trying to simplify it. To, but no, what are you talking about? It doesn't. You, it doesn't, it doesn't have, quite work the same. Have you, you guys? Know? Yeah, because Islam is worse. Because there's a lot more shitty <laughs> things sure, in the Quran. Sure, but yeah. but here's here's the thing, here's the reason it doesn't work. And Andrew Mimsy, feel free to jump in if you if if you have anything to add. The reason it doesn't work is that the vast majority of Muslims are Muslims today in 2018, mm. not 1400 Actually, that years ago, my point. Muslims today in 2018, is because they were born into Muslim families and they were, you know, this is how it is. It's almost like a culture and almost like an identity. That actually proves Most, my point. Hold, hold that that proves my point. That yeah. proves my point. Right, I mean, let, me, let, me, yeah. let me finish. Yeah. Yeah. But the Nazis <laughs> are Nazis are usually, they're Nazis because of the merits of the Nazi ideology. Yes, there are people who are raised by Nazis and all of that's true, but you have to have some sort of subscription to the, the Nazi ideology. So the difference between Islam as an ideology and Muslim as an identity is much more stark that and much more distinct point. than the difference between a you Nazi and Nazism. I that's, agree with, but I always say that, Ellie. You know I always say that. But, but, Can I just but, say the best thing about this show is you two arguing? <laughs> but that that proves my point because for you it's, guys, not for me, Ali. But no, you can't just it. say that as if that's a rebuttal to what I said because that's not at all a rebuttal to what I said. Because the point is that most Muslims that live peaceful lives is because they don't have a reformed version of Islam that they're following. They're ignoring Islam, and that's why they have peace. 
peaceful lives. Most Muslims don't give a shit about Islam. They never read the Quran. They don't read the Hadith. They live their lives independently from Islam. But this and is where the, the contra- this is where that, confusion is. No, yeah, like but the that, word my moderate, part, moderate means moderate doesn't mean something. No, moderate means, doesn't mean reform. Reform means like you looked at the Quran I, and I you know. reformed it. That's bullshit. Most people, most most moder- moderate, 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 so-called moderate Muslims are moderates because they're ignoring Islam, I, not because I, no, they're reforming. I agree. Islam. I, I, we agree on that. I'm not. I know. I'm not defending the term moderate. I find it interesting. This is how complicated the situation is that people say, oh no, moderate Muslims, I'm a moderate Muslim, I'm a moderate Muslim. I mean, you know what that means? That means moderation. When you when you do something moderation, that means you don't do all of it uh, and you don't do none of it. You do a little bit of it. Now, if you're doing that with the Quran, which is supposed to be all or none, right? then you're ignoring most of it. That's the only way to be a moderate. So you're so, right about that. Yeah. But people still call themselves Muslim. That's the thing. It's complicated. Uh, yeah. Uh, Anyways, a- I, anyway, I, I'm yeah, so I support reform in the way of reforming Muslims to move away from Islam. That's the reform I support, not the reform okay. of not the reform of improving Islam. You can't reform. You can't reform bullshit. Okay. You can't. There's nothing. There's nothing to reform there. It's so. You have to throw out the baby out with the bathwater because the baby is the problem. But go on. I, I uh, agree I with that, but it's all, it's also just the, like, as you said before, which I think I didn't, you know, uh, that's what we agree on, that it's reforming the, the institutions, basically, you know, I don't think it's going to be that yeah. quick that everyone just kind of disregards yeah. Islam totally. See, no, no, but, on my yeah. side, Armin. no, because I never said it's going to be quick. So that's, that's <laughs> why I, a lot of people are like, oh, why are we almost outright atheism overnight? Like, when did you hear me ever say that as, say I, that as I, possible? I, but, no, okay. I, I, I want to sum this up. We, we, we actually have more that we agree with than we disagree with. But right. uh, Hazem is saying Armin almost didn't get into a reform debate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was because of the question. It wasn't my fault. Are we going to ignore I, the patron questions? I wasn't. No, no, Armin, to, yeah. uh, no, of course you weren't. It's good. That's why they ask the questions. And they bring right. up reform a lot. And that's right. why we talk about it a lot. Right. Right. Because that is a very important topic. Right. Right. So, um, uh, Blonde Infidel is saying, uh, uh, okay, she's saying, uh, are Mimsy and Vidu going to do a video talking about who left Islam first and how the other one felt? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just say everyone asks that question. Definitely, we will. We have. I know we've been saying it for a while, but it, it's coming up. We will do a video on our entire story, just even our story, how we met and what happened, and we'll put all of that together and Who's have channel? to do it. Whose channel? Uh, it'll be it'll be my channel. Yes. Vid, so just <laughs> subscribe and watch out for it. It'll, it'll definitely come. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Marigo is actually bringing up another question. I guess since you're in the UK, I thought it'd be uh, interesting to touch on this. Uh, he's talking about the America-British difference again. He's saying America has stronger rules for migration and bigger geography. Um, okay. <laughs> I think that that's part of it. But what what do you think about the uh, the whole immigration um, issue? Like, do you do you have a specific stance on it? I know that people there are some people want to stop Muslim immigration completely. Oh, um, no. no, I don't. I don't. I don't really have. Uh, no, I, I haven't really kind of thought too much about in terms of immigration. I think. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what? What? You're you're in Canada, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Um. Oh, you're both in Canada. Fine. Okay. Because yeah. Because what? What? What's kind of the situation in America at the moment? Do you know, or is it too? Because uh, I don't. Yeah, it's uh, the the U.S. immigration is actually uh, a lot of it is based on like the the U.S. It, essentially when they founded the U.S. You know, the Statue of Liberty says, "Give us your tired, your poor, your hungry." Yeah. So a lot of their immigration system is, even though there is merit based immigration, but this a lot of it is also sort of uh, random. There's a lot of uh, uh, opening for refugees and and for there's a lottery system where people get green cards and lotteries. Uh, Canada actually has more of the kind of immigration system that Trump wants. They always have. It's merit based. So, uh, okay. you know, when you immigrate here based on your degree and your experience and everything, you get yeah. points. And based on that, you get that. But Canada is also very welcoming to refugees. But we haven't had the kind of. Uh, we're, yeah. we're also welcoming to. Are we not also welcome to ISIS, apparently? Are we not? I don't know how. Is that an exaggerated story? or they, no, it's it's not actually exaggerated. But uh, there, there was a thing that people who are coming back fighting for ISIS, and and it's a little more complicated than the the headlines. Is that uh, you know the Trudeau government has said that they wanted to reintegrate these people who are coming back okay. from Syria. That's and now the problem is that on one hand you can't tell. There's no way to uh, 
tell for sure how many people came back and actually fought for ISIS and who didn't. So there's no mm -hmm. way you can differentiate them. So one way you can do is you can reintegrate them. If you're going to try them and put them in jail, you have to prove that they actually were working for ISIS. So there's a lot of nuance around it that has been a massive messaging fail from the Trudeau government, uh, which which I still largely you know support on most other things but i think here they've they've they have a big uh, blind spot so we should have I, an entire even, episode on immigration i think yeah, yeah i think that's yeah. definitely something yeah that needs kind of more time it's not it's not something i've kind of looked into mm -hmm. deeply though or thought about deeply to be honest with you in terms of in in, in relevance to the kind of See, this, this is a very an answer that you don't hear a lot people say and usually people it's not satisfying to people but it should be because there's not that many people that won't say like I don't know. I haven't looked into it. That's a very brave and honest thing to say. And I wish more people would be honest enough to say that because, I mean, I don't say that often enough. I should say that more often. <laughs> like, um, yeah, we don't, we, if you don't know something, like tell people like, Hey, I don't know. I haven't looked into this. You know, that we need to make that a popular thing to say. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that. Yeah, and I think like the U.S. British difference. I I think that's really interesting. We should probably have a whole episode on that too. Definitely, um, yeah. But, yeah. We should bring the, an expert um, or something. A, a lot of that also has to do with, and I, I think I may have mentioned this before, is that like we had people from Pakistan who used to migrate to the UK and to other European countries. And they were sort of running a shop. And then the, when they went to these European countries, they found that the social assistance that were, they were getting actually was way more. And the free mm -hmm. healthcare and the free education for their kids and all that was uh, much, uh, it was giving them a much better lifestyle than the, or the work hard lifestyle that they had in their home country. So they yeah. kind of became complacent. Whereas uh, people who come to the US are forced to integrate. And even in Canada, you know, they come in after a certain while. The, the social distance it do, it doesn't last forever. You know, after a while right. you have to you have mm. to get in and 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 so Muslims here in the U.S. and Canada tend to be um, among the higher socioeconomic status. They um, tend to have more. Yeah, they actually do. No, I agree, but we have a, but we have an unfair advantage, though. I mean, I don't know if it's unfair because we have a whole ocean between us and the countries that they come from. So the screening becomes a lot easier. That's also a factor. Yeah, That's because the only people that could come to Canada and United States are people that could afford like plane tickets. They can't get on boats and they can't get hide in trucks and stuff like that and come just like in Europe. So the U.S. and Canada have a lot of like get, get like the yeah that, get that's, it easier. that's a factor as well. But yeah. e even in the past, just generally the community over here is generally more affluent. Uh, and the communities in, in, like, for instance, in France, is uh, they're generally lower social economic status. Definitely. I mean, it's like you said. It's almost like they're too, they're, they're too good to people here in, in, in Europe. You know, they really give it to you easy. I think. I mean, I as I don't know too much about kind of how it is in American Canada, but I know the health yeah. systems are quite different. I believe, um, yeah. but it's you know, everything's handed to you on a plate. It, really? It, it, oh yeah, like yeah. it's so it's the, so the easy just to get. Every, you guys have the NHS, oh, and we have yeah, we have Fine. we have single pair yeah. as well. But but you're right oh, that okay. yeah, the, the social distancing, and I I do support social assistance programs. I just think that when you take them to an extreme, yeah. um, then uh, people makes do tend amazing. to move them. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It does or it makes so. yeah. it makes more people want to move into your country and take advantage of it without paying taxes. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that's exactly what it is. I mean, people are dying to come here. It's, it's like that when you go back, when I go to Morocco, it's like everyone just wants to, you know, kind of go back with you, you know, because they, they know about the social system. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know, I have different kind of, I keep going back and forth about the way that the social system is here just because they can they literally you just sign up and you just get money in your bank account, whatever huh. you need, get a social house. It's so easy just to get a flat. You could, you just chill like it's like you don't have to do yeah. that there, i mean there, there are there really are there are definitely a lot of differences and you know the whole nation state thing is also different american canada where all nations of immigrants i mean everybody over here is a second third fourth fifth generation immigrant the only natives are the original like the first nations native americans and native canadians here uh, the, yeah. the vast majority of it's immigrants. So it's really uh, the, these are societies built on ideals, not necessarily blood and soil and land and you know all of those things. Whereas the the, the UK and Fred, all of these the European countries have other sort of more 
uh, like land based histories and nation ethnic based exactly, histories. Exactly, yeah. But I actually spoke about that in the, w- with the Grooming Gangs video I did. You know, part of the research I was looking into is I, I didn't realize this, but a lot of the, you know, in those the northern regions of England, a lot of the Pakistani communities that are in the kind of high density Muslim communities, um, there's like a high percentage. I think it, I think it's like 50% or something crazy like that. It's 50% of like the babies born in, in those hospitals in the area. And like the average, they had one parent who had just come from abroad. So a parent that wasn't born in the UK. So a lot of these kind of Pakistani communities live in their Muslim bubbles. And then when they want to get married, they're like, oh, well, we need to go back home to get the person to, you know, and then, then they bring. So it's like there's a first generation in every single generation. And that adds to how they can't kind of, you know, kind of mix with the British people. You know, they're in, they're just, it just adds to their, their bubble, basically. Because then a lot of the time, the, the, the mothers or whoever they're bringing from abroad doesn't speak great English. And, you know, it, it's just the, the cycle just keeps going around. So um, I think that is a big difference as well. If, if, if it's easier to bring people here as well, um, yeah. then they're more likely to come and then be like, well, I can just marry someone from Pakistan and bring them over. So... Yeah, there's that too. Right. Anyway, um, I we're get, we're gonna uh, wrap up here. I'm gonna end with first of all a correction. I think I may have referred to Marigo as he at some point, and that was a pronoun fail on my part. Uh, Marigo is actually a girl. Marigo, my apologies. Uh, so oh, you're a she, I, and yeah, I'm really? sorry. I didn't. I assumed. <laughs> I, I assumed your gender. I was wrong, and uh, I give my apologies. Uh, so uh, so uh, Saba saying. And this is, I think, great as, as a wrap-up thing uh, for, for the last question. Is if possible, uh, wrap up with, quote, a message to the world, regardless of religion, countries, race, etc., ideologies, always clash. But what should be the priority of every human? Just a very high level, what do you think the, the main priority should be? What drives you? Uh, yeah. It's a little Oprah, but... I mean, I... I, I like it. My immediate thought was just m- m- like my happiness just came out and like I thought love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, because it's just, I mean, I don't know what came to your mind when you thought of that. I, I would say uh, for me, uh, yeah, I would say that love and relationships. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, and the the other thing I'd say is just a quest to keep on finding out more. Just you know, the, the, my, my whole, the only thing that drives me uh, is. I just want to find out more about the world and everything and mm-hmm. people and everything I'm living in. And that makes every day interesting. And I know yeah. it's never going to, you're never going to find out everything, but that's what drives me on a daily basis. It's just a, definitely. But if, if, no more. For me, yeah. it's like, I know I'm really happy. So apologies if this sounds annoying, but if, for me, if, if everything comes from a space of love, then it doesn't, doesn't, for me, it's, it, it kind of changes everything that you do, you know? If you're doing it from a space of uh, kind of caring and not for humanity and not wanting to harm others um, and it's and it's to connect with people because you love them and it's to, you know, grow and all, all those aspects, I think if it comes from that space, then it just means so much more. But, yeah. I agree with you. I, would, <laughs> I like... I, would, I embrace the cheese. I'm good. I would yeah. just to make it a little bit more cheesy. I would just say uh, don't <laughs> don't make don't make agreements a condition for friendship. Yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's good. One. Agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So do I. Yeah. So. All right. uh, so guys, we're going to have the, uh, thanks everyone. We're going to have uh, links to this, uh, to um, the Mimsy's YouTube page. If you want to just go out and search Mimsy vids, why I left Islam. That'll take you to her first video. And then you're sure to be spending hours then on the, on the YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Just go there. It is, uh, you know, she's just fantastically insightful. Uh, she's very open with how she shares it. She does everything with a smile. Um, there is integrity and there's compassion as both. So, I mean, that's something that you'll see. And that's why I, I'm a huge fan of you, Bibsy. And it seems like most of the people in our chat really are too. Now, the people that didn't know about you now are. And I think that'll just continue. Yeah. To rise well, to I'm a huge down. fan of you guys. So what you guys are doing is so epic and yeah, huge <laughs> fan. <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, so uh, everybody in the chat, uh, Saba, you came for the first time. Thank you very much. Uh, your comments are great. Marigo, Ms. Marigo, is it Ms.? Like MS period. I'm not going to assume anything else. Um, <laughs> Renzo, uh, Renzo, Infidel, has, Renzo has uh, lots of great information usually in the live chat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Renzo at absolutely blonde infidel reason on mm-hmm. faith. Um, 
There you go. I'm gonna say all 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 of your Ian, names. Ian. Yeah, Ian. George. George Kardahi. Hope I see you soon. Sissel. Mm-hmm. Sissel was here for the first time. Um. So thank you, Sissel. Reason yeah, and Ian faith. Bush, you already mentioned. Reason and faith. Yeah. Reason and faith. And I already mentioned him yeah, too. So yeah, guys. Everybody, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, remember to subscribe. Go to secularjihadist.com. That's the site. Uh, if you want to be a patron, you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. You really can. So just uh, go up and if you can support us that way, you get access. You can watch this conversation. If you're hearing it, um, you can actually watch it live and you can participate and ask questions for as little as a dollar a month. If you can't support us financially, no problem. We still want you to share the content, tell people about it, put it on your social media timelines and go to iTunes and give us a review. Just leave us a review and, and just rate the podcast. Uh, and again, I once we move to- Memesy's channel as well. Don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Yeah, earlier, right. and I will mention it again. Yeah, uh, and uh, and yeah. Once we get to five hundred uh, patrons, I've we've talked about this before. We're going to start translating some of these yes. uh, into languages spoken in the Muslim world, like Arabic, Farsi, Malay, uh, Urdu, uh, Persian, uh, you know, Turkish, whatever. So um, Bengali. Yeah, we can do. Yeah. So so it's all of that. So yeah, Mimsy Vids, check her out. And uh, yeah, if you really liked what you heard, go subscribe to her channel. And and um, yeah, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 The Secular Jihadists have been made possible thanks to the Illuminati and the covert support of Israel and the CIA. That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topic and guest suggestions. Or head over to secularjihadist.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you.